Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to Kila Chari Torah's daily review of Halakha, of Jewish law, uh, for Friday the 22nd of July. Uh, we're talking about the Halakha's pertinent, particularly uh, worth uh, discussing at this time of year, uh, between the 17th of Tammuz and the fast of Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, signs of outward signs of mourning, uh, loss and grief when visiting the Kotel Hamaravi, the Western Wall, the Koisel, uh, in Jerusalem, uh, seeing Jerusalem itself uh, and the uh, place of the Temple. Medrash Rabbah says that God promised the Jewish people that the Kotel itself, the Western Wall, will never be destroyed. Medrash Rabbah also says that the Shechina, the Divine Presence, never departs from the Wall. When the Temple was destroyed, all the gates were sealed except the Gate of Tears, we learned in Maseches Brachas, those of us who learned it a few years ago, uh, completed our study of it over COVID, actually. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, all the gates were sealed except for the Gate of Tears. The Western Wall, for this point, uh, for this, uh, uh, based on this idea, became known as the Wailing Wall because of the tears that the Jewish people shed there. After the Temple's destruction, the uh, uh, Tfilas, our prayers, ascend heavenward th- uh, in the direction of the Kotel, Mishnah Brura, and others say that it's prohibited to enter the Makom HaMikdash, it's prohibited to enter uh, the place where the dome, where the uh, Dome of the Rock is located today. Uh, and one may be incur a, a severe penalty for that, uh, even if they did first immerse in a mikveh and remove their shoes and so on. Uh, Ramosha Feinstein maintains that there is uh, uh, nothing worse than taking a stone from the Kotel, even though there's no prohibition uh, uh, involved, one sh- certainly should not do that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it after Shabbos. For now, let us uh, remind ourselves of the uh, Zmanim, the times uh, connected to uh, the beginning of Shabbos. Uh, this afternoon, uh, earliest candlelighting is 7.17, 17 minutes past 7 p.m. Uh, is the earliest time one may light candles, may Kiddush usher in the Holy Shabbat. Uh, we are not meeting this Friday night. Uh, unfortunately, we've not got our Friday night minion together yet. Were we to do that, we would meet at 7 o'clock, Davin Mincha, and then roll into Kabbalat Shabbat and Mairev. So if you'd like to dive in at the same time as everybody else, we can all be together, even though not in the same place. So 717 earliest candlelighting, actual candlelighting time is uh, 833 uh, tonight. Uh, Shachras tomorrow morning is 915. Our regularly scheduled uh, uh, Shabbat morning minion uh, meets as it ever did. Uh, and uh, Motzei Shabbat, the conclusion of Shabbos, 942. This is a very special Shabbos. It's a Shabbos Mavarchim. We are blessing the new month of Menachem Av, uh, which begins on Friday. So the, it's, uh, we'll be mentioning that the reappearance of the moon uh, in Jerusalem, the eternal and undivided capital of Israel, will take place on Thursday, this coming Thursday, uh, July 28th at 7.32 p.m. and four parts. The Moilad Vet Zain in Yerushalayim, Donnerstick Oven, Svei und Reisig Minut, Noch Zibna Zeger mit Fir Chalokim. Again, Rosh Chodesh is a Thursday night and Friday. Uh, may it be uh, rather than a, a day of sa- a month, uh, at least the first part of the month of sadness and uh, loss, may it be transformed into gladness and rejoicing for us, for all the Jewish people, and, and by extension, the entire world. Have a wonderful Shabbat, a good Shabbos, and we'll see each other after.